Welcome back, everyone, to Decently Indecent. I am joined here once again uh, with my wife and co-host on another channel, Mrs. Lush. Sweetheart, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Uh, I've had a couple of really nice, incredible guests on that I'm friends with that I admire the last couple of weeks, but uh, none of them let me look at their boobs. So <laughs> felt like I owed you that much to get you back on here. No, people, people love you, and I love chatting with you. And for me, it just feels good to have this kind of like three camera setup. You know, we get to—I don't have to wear the headphones, so there is that beauty of being in the same room with someone. And um, yeah, it's just a fun time having you on. So today we're going to do it a little bit differently. There is, uh, there's this thing called overrated, underrated, which it's you know it's been around for a while. This particular version was inspired by a guy named Jeff Nippard who is a huge fitness exercise nutrition guy on YouTube. He's got like four something million subscribers. Um, he's done a couple of these episodes. I think two in the last year he's had on Lane Norton and Dr. Mike Isratel. They're both very big scientists, uh, lifter nutrition guys on YouTube. So I want to do the same thing. Uh, a lot of people that watch us know, you know, some of the things we're into uh, fitness, nutrition, lifestyle stuff. So we're going to take a little bit from that, talk a little bit about like the nutrition and the fitness or the, the training side of things, and then do some fun stuff to that's not related to that. And we also had a couple people on YouTube ask some questions that might fit into it. Now I do want to give the disclaimer that, uh, I have a four year degree in exercise science so my credentials run quite deep. <laughs> and what I mean by that is it's been over 15 years since I've been out of college and probably all the things I learned barely even apply anymore today. That said, I have a lot of years of anecdotal uh, stories. I've been training for 20 plus years. So I'm just going to answer it from the perspective of what's worked for me, what I think makes sense. And of course, you know, there's that lens of... <clears throat> the science-backed research and stuff. But as we know, over the last 30, 40, 50 years, what was science-backed 40 years ago might be a complete scam today. So you can only trust things so far. D-Y-O-R, as they say. Do you know what that stands for? Mark? Oh, D-Y-O-R? Do your own research. It's an acronym uh, yeah, for that. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, but for you, and I'll let you talk about this, you you uh, you know, you didn't really get into training and stuff like that until about three years ago or Yeah, it's so. been three years since I started um, any type of training. And of course I love it. And so, yeah, as you had said, you know, I'm going to speak to what works for me. I'm not, I don't have a degree in exercise science, though I am a nurse. So I have a little bit of a, you have a nat and phys background. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, I'm not a personal trainer though. I enjoy it very much. Yeah. Um, happy to talk about what so I believe what we're saying here is don't expect us to cite any studies. <laughs> okay. We're citing the house of anecdotes and right. that's what matters. But D Y L R, you know, go see your doctor, all that bullshit. My wife was fortunate enough for those of you watching on camera and not just listening uh, here on either story fire uh, or YouTube now, which the episodes will be coming out a week after they upload to story fire. She printed out these overrated, underrated uh, pieces of paper. So, we're going to talk some topics. We're going to hold up whether we think it's underrated or overrated and then have to try to explain ourselves so the best we can. Okay. Are you ready, darling? A little nervous. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting out with some nutrition stuff. Okay. okay? All right. Uh, the first one is, honey, pre-workout. Now, that could range from I mean, like your C4, your powders that you're boofing. I know your Celsius is the TNT. I mean, pre-workout is probably one of the most lucrative industries on the planet right now. Uh, so let's all right. Let's hold it up. I'm going to go. This is a tough one it's for tough. me. I, I would say somewhere in the middle, but. So we both put up underrated. Go ahead. So so you can put up me? both if it's properly rated. Is it okay? okay. Yeah. I think. I think properly rated. Properly rated. Fair. I put up underrated. Go ahead. Why do you think properly rated? What does pre-workout do? I mean, for me, I'll take anything from a venti coffee to a shot of espresso. You mentioned Celsius. I've tried yeah. different pre-workout powders. I like it all. <laughs> Bring but, it on. But just getting some sort of boost Yeah. before you have to go hit, hit the weights or whatever, right? Yeah. And, you know, I've noticed, too, that when I don't necessarily have time to let it kick in properly, mm -hmm. which has happened. Of course, you know, sometimes you're trying to squeeze in a workout. Yeah. It's not the same. I do the same thing. Sometimes I'll be in the office and I oftentimes work out at the end of the workday 
and I'll lose track of time. And I'm like, oh shit, I meant to start drinking my pre-workout and I have to work out in five minutes. So I'll like start drinking it and be drinking it into the beginning half of my workout. And I can really tell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. And sometimes I'm just like, oh, it's not even worth it. I'll just, whatever. No, I think for me, I put underrated just because I, I appreciate <laughs> it so much because uh, maybe, maybe part of it is how you age too, but, uh, it's one of the most noticeable things on the planet, just having some sort of stimulation. It's And it's like a CNS stimulant, essentially. And it depends on yeah. the pre-workout. Obviously, there's caffeine, which is just like a nervous system stimulant. There's other pre-workouts that are a little more involved that have like stuff that vasodilates and makes you tingle. It's supposed to help the blood flow better. Depends on what level you're going at. But I'm at a point now where like, if I just drank a large coffee before a workout, it would be whatever, because I'm a big coffee drinker. So it's just like drinking coffee just makes me feel relatively normal is what it is. And if I want like that extra boost, it's got to be something like a, you know, like a C4 or a mm -hmm. Celsius or something that has those B vitamins in the, yeah. in the whatever. But yeah, I, uh, I do also think it's good to sometimes take, nah, what am I talking about? I was going to say, take a break. I don't think I've taken a break from coffee or pre-workout in 30 years. So maybe I should shut my mouth. <laughs> so I will say, you know, you have a, a massive tolerance to caffeine. That, that is true. Massive. Yeah. And you know, I myself am a coffee drinker, but you have a lot more than I do. So I I'm will also say a that massive I, human being compared to you. <laughs> you're double my size, yes. But I do. I know it might sound silly, but I know I have my workout plan for the week, and so mm. I know which days I'm going to kind of go harder, and which days are maybe lighter. So I do try to save the more pre workout or Celsius or like yep. something that's a little bit stronger sure. for the harder days. Yeah, I like that. I'm the same way. Absolutely, I, lifting days. Like can, for, okay, so my whole point was that yeah, you can of course build up a tolerance to these things, yeah. and then you need more and more and more, and then yeah, nothing yeah. works. So right. save I it for when you really think you're going to need it, and balance it out. Yeah, I, I agree. So when I'm doing like cardio, just like light, steady state cardio day, like I won't, I don't even bother as much. I'm not as worried. It's mainly for my intense lifting. That yeah, I, when I'm going hard on the glutes and legs. Yeah, ooh, I need something. I love it. All right, <laughs> so so properly laid. <laughs> Properly uh, rated. Properly rated from my wife. Underrated for me just because I love it so much. The next one I like, uh, and I think you're going to like this one. Okay. She doesn't really know what I'm going to ask her, by the I, way. Yeah, but, which uh, is terribly nerve. Fair Life nerve. Products. For the, and before oh. you answer, those of you, I'm sure many of you are familiar with them. Those of you that don't know, Fair Life Products. It, they make like, pro, it's protein supplementation, essentially. They make a flavored milk drink that's like a post-workout. It's 30 grams. They have one that's more. It's 42. They also make normal milk products that are like... I don't know the technology or what they do. They like hyper strain it or do some shit and it just makes it more protein enriched. So it's for the same, or I think even the less sugar, similar amount of calories, you're getting much more protein per serving than traditional milk. And then they obviously have like the shakes that are specifically for protein supplementation. What do you think? I'm going to go Come on. Uh, that for you. That's an underrated. Our house yeah. is full of fair I know, life. I know. I just think when you are trying to hit macros or trying to get to a certain level of protein intake, it is, I put up underrated too, by the way. Okay. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're just, there's a level of convenience that you cannot, you cannot ignore. And right. I'm not saying you're better off, like you shouldn't subsist off of only protein products. Like you need to be eating whole foods and all these things. Totally. But if you are uh, someone that is training intensely, uh, it's been a wonderful addition to just stuff we have around the house. Yeah, it is not easy to maintain a high protein diet. No. And, you know, of course, my protein goal is a little bit, again, you're double my size, yeah. is a little bit lower than yours. Yeah. So it, I can only imagine for you, it's hard. It takes a lot of food to get that much protein in. So having the Fairlife products has been amazing. And yeah, I drink one of those drinks probably most days, I'd say several days a week. It's usually like part of my breakfast yeah. or I will have uh, a protein cereal with the regular Fairlife milk, which I have learned that I like. I never would drink just regular milk. So that was a and funny I think realization. it tastes better than yeah. regular milk. My wife, not a milk love fan. It. And all of a sudden, <clears throat> I think I prompted you to try yes. to get the Fairlife yeah. milk because I was like, hell yeah, I love milk. I'll try it. And I also love it. And then you're like, it turned you into a milk, I don't want to say milk lover. Oh, but I, I will drink it. But you enjoyed it. And, you know, for me personally, as a vegan, it's so hard to <laughs> hit my protein goals. So to have those. <laughs> you just knocked me out. I couldn't, couldn't help myself. Sorry. Yeah, but I mean, I'm shooting for like 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. I weigh typically around 240, 250. Most, if I, if I get 200 or a little over, that's a good day for me. 
Because I'm only eating like, thir- you know, oftentimes three meals, maybe four. And so that's like 70 to 80 grams per meal. So, so yeah, it depends. I'll sometimes slip like the fair life in between those meals if whatever, but. You said 0.8 to. One. Yeah, I feel like point. There's a general. I've heard, no, I've heard that. There's a, a lot of research, and it's this is one of the most hotly debated topics in like the bro science culture. Is like how much protein do okay. you do you eat? And point eight grand, point eight to one gram per pound of body weight is like a loose number if you're trying to grow in hypertrophy. But there's so many variables. Obviously, these are general numbers mm-hmm. that you can shoot for. But something I found is you know focusing on getting that protein number forces you to like, you know, sacrifice other things that might just be empty calories to get to the protein numbers. So it's like, it's a good, it's an easier way. I think than if you're not tracking calories, it's like, all right, just try to get to your protein number in a somewhat healthy, lean way with some supplementation with some whole foods. And that's a good starting block for eating a a protein rich diet that is relatively healthy. Mm-hmm. I think. So that was both underrated for us. We love those not sponsored. <laughs> Unfortunately, we just enjoy Fairlife. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a sponsorship uh, by Fairlife, at least in the, the YouTube sphere. I mean, I there's a, so that, uh, I cannot say the same about the next thing I'm going to talk about. Oh boy. This is very heavily go. sponsored on the, you know, the Huberman modern wisdom, uh, bro science type podcast circuit. And that is LMNT, which is an electrolyte <laughs> supplement or as I like to call it, expensive salt. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what you call it. But I say that as a user and an enjoyer. Um, they're these little packets you tear and it's basically sodium and like a little magnesium and potassium. You know, you add them to your water, or whatever. There's a bunch of different flavors. Um, I Go ahead, hold it up. So here's the deal. Uh, <laughs> that's an easy one for me, sorry. I know it, I know it is. And I, I have trouble doing this. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go properly rated. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say it's you just, very much. You just went overrated. I she went held overrated. it up for those who can't see. Yeah, go ahead. You start. Please. I'd say it's overrated as a whole. Like in general, it's mm-hmm. overrated. I think that it has certain uses that. Sorry, I can't talk. <laughs> I think there are certain situations when it can be particularly useful. Certainly. Endurance, athletics, stuff where you're losing a lot of fluid. Chronic extreme, medical conditions even heat. can sure. result in chronic low sodium. Certainly. I have consumed it and would sometimes, but for me, it's just what you just said. It's only in a search situation where I'm going to be sweating a lot, like a real yeah. high intensity workout, mostly in the summertime or like walking 18 holes to play golf and mm. I'm dripping sweat the whole time. Basically, mm-hmm. if I'm losing a lot of fluid, then I think that it is helpful to replace it with an electrolyte balanced Yep. Liquid versus straight water. Yeah, in my experience, I would agree. I call it expensive salt because it is, quite frankly, just that. It's I mean, mostly salt. Certainly, it's mostly salt. Certainly, it has a little potassium and magnesium. Um, but you know, electrolytes are very important. And you know, you, you you've seen the marketing for decades from Gatorade to these electrolyte drinks, which are honestly just mostly sugar with a lot less electrolytes. Um, the 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 main thing about on tea is it's very salt heavy. There's just a new paradigm of like. You know, salt isn't the bad guy, or at least this is what they're trying to. That's their to, narrative. That, I'm saying that's that's their narrative. I know, obviously, in the medical fields, if you have, you know, can it can lead to some hypertension, hypertension or whatnot, typically acutely. For me, it really helped anecdotally when I do intermittent fasting and I'm doing like 12-8 and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm waking up and I'm fasting throughout the morning. I like to have, you know, my black coffee and then just kind of sipping on an element throughout the morning or like, you know, some water that the electrolytes help. Um, it helps uh, relieve some of this uh, hunger I have. Hmm. There's a weird, there is actually some research to suggest that when you are fasting or just when you feel hungry, having like an electrolyte mix, or you could, that could be partially because you're dehydrated and or low on electrolytes. I mean, that also could be marketing. I don't know. I see you smirking like, <laughs> but and, like I say, anecdotally, like I'll have a few sips and all of a sudden, I will, the hunger will start to go away and I'll just kind of feel in the zone and I feel like I could fast the rest of the day. But do you feel day. like if you just had some, like a good amount of water? No, no, a hundred percent. It's no. notably different? It is different for me, yeah. Okay. Like I've, there's been times where I've tried to fast and just before I even knew what these things were and I was just drinking water and like, I don't know, it, it, it felt different. I would just like to call out, I have to do it. I have to call Please. out the irony of the situation. I forgot my water in our house. Yeah, you're drinking so it I'm right now. So I'm drinking Leon's... <laughs> 
element right now out of his Stanley <laughs> yeah. because I needed something to sip on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's drinking booze. So to that effect, to wrap that one up, like again, th these this is a, a brand that's heavily spent a lot of money on sponsors in the YouTube space. Probably why I even knew about them and tried it. it. For me, I like it for what it is, but I will say if you're on a budget, it's not for you. It's literally just expensive salt. It's like $40 packets <clears throat> for of salt. For 30 salt. right? Oh, the other situation I could see is people enjoying the flavor. That, they, do, well, they do taste good. 100%. I'm hugely into the flavor now. They have like mango chili. They have ones that taste like Gatorade. Yeah, so that 100 yeah. If you don't like just drinking regular water, that can help too. Sometimes they do half packs, whatever. Um, for me properly, I couldn't do underrated. I could only do properly rated because I enjoy it, but I do, I do recognize that it is just, uh, expensive salt and it's not, if you're on a budget, it's not really it's something. Not. It's one of the last things you should probably add to, to your budget, right? For sure. so it just depends on your situation in life. So along those lines, moving on to something I just mentioned that was in congruence with the LMNT. Oh. This is a huge buzz, uh, has been in the last year or two, been around forever. A lot of people do it for religious reasons. Now it's all about, you know, autophagy and cleaning your cells and the best way to lose fat. And that is fasting. You know where I'm going to go on this. I know where <laughs> you're going. I'm going to say, go ahead. Overrated? I'm going properly rated. I'll let you go first this time. You want me to go first? Go ahead. Oh, man. Or do you uh, want me to tell it? <laughs> no, it's fine. I think it's kind of overrated in in the public's information circles right now uh, because there's plenty of ways to live a healthy lifestyle without fasting. But I think fasting can be an incredible tool for a multitude of reasons, whether that's trying to uh, stay within a certain caloric window and that helps you because of your lifestyle the other piece is there is i mean listen there is a lot of scientific evidence around certain uh health benefits to fasting usually that's based around longer fasting like 24 hour or i know 36 hour fasts are a big thing now i keep hearing a lot about these the 36, 36 hour, hour fast oh, no and no i'm sorry i keep hearing a lot about three-day fasts people doing that Okay, so thir so thirty, oh Jesus, twenty four, forty eight, seventy two. So yeah, oh, oh so yeah, day and a half a versus the three that. day. So that'd be like a seventy two hour fast. Yeah. So there's a lot of research to support that there is some sort of like cell cleansing that happens when you put your body. I don't know. Listen, I heard okay. it on Huberman podcast. Cell what do you want me to say? That's it's not the no. Term it's called with? autophagy. It's not cell cleansing. You're, you're essentially it's it's a way for your body to start destroying bad cells that okay. doesn't happen if you aren't in autophagy, which is a state you can't get into when you're constantly uh, metabolizing food. Again, I'm just an anecdotal bro science dude. I know for me personally, and this is what I will speak to, is intermittent fasting is something that has helped me a lot just based on my lifestyle, my struggle with maintaining a caloric deficit or staying at maintenance. I've always struggled with my weight. I got to a place where it became very second nature to do 12, eight, which, or excuse me, 16, eight, which is when you fast for 16 and have an eight hour eating window throughout the day. And for me, that turned into like noon time until 8 PM. Mm. And it was great because it was like something I could stick to. It eliminated my temptation to want to just like binge snack late at night, which is something I, I am have trouble with. So I'm just like, oh, I'm sticking to this. I'm not going to do that. So it helped me create some structure around it. I also got to a point where it just, you know, initially it's like, oh, I felt a little hungry in the mornings, but you get used to it pretty quick. And, you know, eight of those hours in theory, eight of the 16 hours you're sleeping. So it's like you just, yeah. you have a late dinner or a late snack at eight and then, Depending on your nightlife, what time you go to bed, you don't eat the rest of the night, wake up, fast until lunch. So th that for me was awesome for my lifestyle. I know for some people, it depends on what you do. Some people like to do it differently where they'll do like, you know, they'll do from eight in the morning until whatever, four in the afternoon or nine to five, something like that and have their meals then. It can really just depend on who you are. I don't, I can't speak to, so f it was mostly about trying to stay in a calorie deficit to, to keep, to, to get into better shape, to, to get a little bit leaner. I can't speak to any uh, unbelievable, you know, health benefits or, uh, you know, anti-cancer <laughs> sure. treating that, that took place. But I know that you see a lot of that online where it's like, oh yeah, fasting leads to reduced ducts and cancer, all these things. Yeah. And that's I can't the stuff speak that, to that, but that's the stuff that, you know, kind of bugs me or like that fasting is the only way to fat loss, fat loss, fat loss. Mm. But 
you know, and I'm not shitting on it as a whole. Like, if it works for you and your situation and it helps you maintain a certain, you know, level of calorie intake without being in a huge surplus, yeah. then it's great. But I think for me, you know, my opinion is that it is just that. It's a means to a calorie deficit, probably, you know, for most people that do intermittent fat fasting and are dropping weight week after week because they, they're staying in that zone. It's probably because it's putting you in a calorie deficit. Hundred percent. Yeah. Well, not probably. It is because no, it's putting it is. you in a calorie deficit. And I deficit. think that's the obvious part. The part that I'm less versed on, that I'm more curious to see as more research comes out over several years, is beyond just the weight loss piece. Like, is there substantial evidence to suggest that if you do, you know, monthly seventy two hour, three day fasts, you're going to great greatly reduce your risk of cancer or something? I just don't know how sure. you would quantify that. That's certainly something that's interesting. But another piece, another reason why I give it some credence is a lot of, I don't want to sound like the liver king <laughs> primals. <laughs> but when you think about historically, genetically, how humans subsisted for however many millions of years, it was feast and famine. You know what I mean? It's like you go out, you hunt, you find, you kill a fucking wild tusked boar or whatever the hell it was. And then you feast on that, you fill up and then you might go days without being able to eat because of the conditions you live in. So I'm not saying you need to live like a caveman or like mm -hmm. liver king to live healthy in the current age where we're surrounded by a lot of comforts and things that we have easy access to. I do think there's always stuff that exists in our genetic code, in our DNA that has been around for millions of years that makes sense. So oftentimes I, I think about that piece of it too. And mm. part of that is why I think there might be some, some, some credence to it and why I like it. One more thing I want to say about it is that oh. I think you have to want to do that and have to enjoy doing that to do that. I think that, you know, no diet is worth torturing yourself over. And I'm well, a hungry bitch. I'm never going to go fasting. No, you never fast. I couldn't. I, I would say to rebut that point, there is an element of it being something that helps you build discipline. And when you look at the religious piece, which is why I don't do it, religious fasting is all about discipline in kind mm -hmm. of like a weird form of self-flagellation to, you know, I don't mimic what Jesus did when he fasted in the desert for 40 days, all this stuff. But for me, there was a piece of it that I, I enjoyed the idea of restricting myself and putting myself through the discomfort of hunger. Because if I can't put myself through a little bit of discomfort to try and reach a goal, that makes me kind of a pussy. And that's like my overarching thesis on life. It doesn't have to be with fasting. It can be with working out, just anything in general. It's like, oh, if you want this thing or you know this thing is better for you and you really want it, and you're not willing to endure like mild discomforts to get there. It okay. kind of makes we you think a pussy. There. What? Oh, it does. Oh no, I no, I don't. I don't disagree with your thinking. Yeah. I just think completely the opposite. I'm okay. more like sustainability. Like, you're like how, work out the most, in the way you like. The most comfortable like way I can get yoga. to my goals. <laughs> kind of, yeah. No, but that's not. But so that's fine. It's and my. I'm mostly saying that for people that have trouble getting to their goals, okay. I guess. But you, to your credit, you've done an unbelievable job of like getting to this place where you 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 look great, you live in a healthy lifestyle and you're doing it in a way that works really well for you. And you obviously had some discomfort around changing your lifestyle and your eating habits, but you, you've been able to find, you've done a, a masterful job of I don't know, I guess finding the, the, the formula that's worked for you. And I think part of that formula is really going heavy on the workout piece. So before we wrap that part up, I mean, for me, like it's all been all about sustainability because, you know, we've talked about this before amongst ourselves, but whatever yeah. you do to lose weight or get in shape, you have to keep doing. So yep. that's, that's just where my head's been at. Love it. Love it. All right. So that's, we, we have some disagreements there, but, but it, it, it's fine. That's normal. I get where you're coming from. hundred <laughs> percent. And I get where you're coming from. Next up. This one I think is interesting because this applies to almost everyone. Diet sodas and zero calorie drinks in the form of zero calorie drinks that are, excuse me, zero calorie drinks that are like artificially sweetened. Okay, interesting. Overrated, underrated. What do you think? I'm saying underrated. I'm also going really? underrated. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm impressed. Yep. Look at yep. us agreeing. I know there's a lot of debate on the internet about sucralose and all these things, yeah. cancer, blah, blah, blah. And then there's the rebuttal of like, well, you'd have to drink the equivalent of 30 cans of Diet Coke for it to be a thing. The rat studies this, the rat studies that. And certainly, yes, everything, every tool at your disposal that you can use probably should be used in balance. Yes. In a way that's not a, a use and abuse. As they say, 
you know, every good thing uh, can become a bad thing in excess. I love it. I'm, and I'm not a big diet soda guy, but when we're talking about like, you can bring it back to like the pre-workout Celsius, like whatever it is, things that are just a little bit different than water yeah. and occasionally you like to indulge in that are zero calories. Wonderful. I agree. It's yeah. not going to replace you ever having a glass of water, but <laughs> right. Why not? Oh, even, you know, would that go back to like, not go back to, but would that include using, you know, zero sugar creamers and stuff like that in the coffee? I guess. Yeah. 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 I mean, you could go, you could run far and wide with this one. Cause there's a million zero calorie replacements for things that mm. I don't <sighs> It depends on how deep you go, because there is a, a part of me that is is a little bit anti the movement that is trying to replace everything that's organic with something kind of like lab created or, you know, taking out the badness and just because I think there is a point where your entire diet is just consuming, you know, fucking slop that's created in a large factory somewhere and marketed to you as healthier. Mm. And again, it comes back to balance. So like I... I Whole, you know, you need whole foods. You need to eat things that have nutrients and are nutritious. But if you want to, you know, smash a Diet Coke or something, I think on a one-to-one -one basis, you are much better doing that than smashing 60 grams of sugar in, I don't know, the same equivalent when it's not diet. But it needs to be a, it needs to be a small piece of the bigger picture, which is a reasonable, <laughs> nutritious diet. Would you agree with that or no? I agree with you. Okay. Oh, this one I was curious to ask you because, and I know what your answer is going to be, but I'm curious what people listening or watching think. Um, meal replacement services. Um, meal replacement services? I'm sorry. Yeah. What would you call it? You know what I'm talking about. Like no, So you're talking about Nutray. like meal. What would you? Oh, yeah. No, like uh, meal prep services. Okay. Meal prep services. Because I'm thinking meal replacement to me means like. A drink that replaces oh, a meal. Like, That's no, my no, no, no. Brain Sorry, went. I guess I should have phrased that better. So, a meal prep service is these companies. I know some of them you can do online. There's others that are local, but they essentially will. Um, they prepackage cooked meals for you that have all the macros set out. They saran wrap it. They send it to you. I know some companies send you the ingredients, and you're expected to cook it. Mm. We use a local one where it's fully prepared. Saran wrapped and you just nuke it for a minute and a half to two. It's, uh, you know, anyways, well, how do you feel about those? I'm, I'm going, yeah, we're just both underrated. 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 I just think, you know, most people are really busy and I feel like for a lot of people that is, you know, an excuse and, or something that is a deterrent to them maybe changing their diet or feeling like they have enough time to meal prep. I think it's a great option. Yep. Busy working individuals, parents, older people. I think there's a lot of angles. For me, there's the convenience angle, which uh, is obvious. It depends on how much you want to do it. We typically shoot for like two, two a week sometimes. I probably cook for us five nights a week, and then we do that maybe two nights a week, but not every single week. We don't no, get we it take, every single we week. Weeks we take weeks off. Yeah, like every other week or so. But uh, but oh. I would get us each two to three meals from a delivery service, and. You know, kind of how we've rationalized it was also that those are nights we're not getting takeout. We we never order takeout, that which is, is really weird because yeah. we used to all it's the time. It's honestly like our version of takeout. I it guess is. I guess most people they have that night where it's like, oh, I'm too tired, or you, the yeah. kids got acting up, and it's like, oh, we're just gonna do takeout. That's our version of it. It's a prepared meal that's ready to go. Um, but it's we it's got we know the macros. It's you know on the healthier side versus grabbing five guys or something like that, mm. which fits our goals obviously. And the, the point I really wanted to make for, I know a lot of people, you know, buying groceries, eating, like everything is difficult now. Like the, the price of shopping is going up. You look at grocery bills, it makes you want to fucking game end yourself. But in our circumstance, I feel like there's a pretty good price comparison to like if you were to cook at home, if you're oh yeah yeah buying some of these meals and not for nothing, but you get a little discount because you're a nurse, right? There's a, yeah. I do. Yeah. So if it's, we, uh, you know, initially when I heard of it, I thought it would be very cost prohibitive, but it's the type of thing where we're at a place where it's, it probably would cost us the same to just buy the equivalent amount of groceries or something like that. Yes. And yeah. I know I mentioned takeout already, but it's definitely cheaper than getting takeout for sure. 
Oh, 1,000%. <laughs> yeah, 1,000% yeah, 1, cheaper than getting takeout. Well, let's move on then to something that I think we can both uh, maybe have a little fun with and jab at. Let's, let's talk about detoxing. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot no. about this one. You sounded like Consuela. No, I clean. No. <laughs> Wait, did I pull the right one? Yeah. Overrated. We don't as really you can even, tell by my no. Yeah, I don't think we need to really stay that long on this one. Do you have a liver that functions? <laughs> yes, then congratulations. You're good. Your you body's, don't need to detox. Your body's detoxing right now. Unless you want to poop a lot. <laughs> but no, like like 42 hour, or what is it, three day juice cleanses? Like, oh yeah. my God, I love it. People are like, yeah, I lost so much weight. It's like, bitch, because you didn't eat anything for three days. Like, what do you think was going to happen? Lost your body, a ton of fluid. Yeah, yeah, you defecated all of the things out of your body. You lost a ton of fluid. Of course, you're going to be a little dry. Yeah, it's just wild. My favorite. So I've done. A, I did a video. I've done videos in the past on kind of like quack detox products. Oh. My favorite was one I did on a detox product where you put a, it's like, it looks like a hand warmer, but it's got, it looks, it actually looks exactly like uh, the foot warmer that has a sticky on one side. And it's supposed to be this crazy thing you put on the arch of your foot under your sock and overnight it detoxes and people wake up. And when you take it off, like the, you know, the white bag that has all the stuff in it has like turned green and slimy. And they're like, look at all this stuff. Look at all this toxins that pulled out of my body. And I'm like, dude, that's literally just the green and that's the shit inside the bag getting moist from like the moisture of your foot. And so I did a whole video on it and I like, I wet the bag and guess what? The bag with water and it got green and slimy. I was like, imagine that. Exposed. So yeah, I just, I don't know. That's one of the things where it's like, it just feel anything that's like detox just feels like the biggest marketing gimmick of all time. It feels very gimmicky. Case, yes. case closed. Mm -hmm. Case closed. Next up, everybody's favorite. And I know we talked about this briefly on uh, a, a, a video we did on our journey the last few years, several months ago. Uh, but calorie counting. Mm. Overrated oh. or underrated? Oh, yeah, I'm going to. Uh, you're going underrated. I'm going underrated. I'm going properly, but I I'm I'm when I'm leaning in between underrated and properly rated. It's certainly not overrated. It's definitely not overrated <sighs> because it works. I don't know. Yeah. Like it sucks is why I put <laughs> to me. It like I just don't like doing it. But that's it's why hard. I properly rated it. It's hard, but it is very effective at forcing you to be self-aware of what you're doing. Yeah. It's a tool. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people think once you do it, you have to do that forever, but yeah. that should not be the goal. It's kind of a tool in your toolkit to know what you're consuming. And I don't know. I just, I've heard other people say this. These are not my words, but like, how are you supposed to know what you're consuming? Like people think that, that it's like going in blind to a diet. If right. you are just eating, eating, eating and thinking I'm eating healthy, but really, you have no idea, like, how many calories you're consuming. Are you in a surplus? Or, like, how far in a right. surplus are you? Yeah, it's as much educational as it is, uh, you know, self-awareness, you know, so depending where you're at. And, you know, like we said, the reason you can eat, you eat intuitively, you've been doing it for years, you do really good at that. But there was a long period of time where you're just learning what's in certain foods. You get very comfortable with being able to eyeball things that you might have never known before. Um but it's so for me, that was a big part of it too, where it was like, I, I had a background I'd lifted my whole life. It was always protein heavy and stuff like this, but it was really a wake up call. I was like, man, when I actually do the numbers, crunch the numbers, like there are time days where I'm like thought like I wasn't eating that much. And mm -hmm. I was like, holy shit, I'm still at like 3000 calories or 3,200 calories. Or even like a certain meal, you're like, holy y yeah. shit. I mean, Portions it, it, it are, adds whoa. up quick. So it, it, it forces you to really look at what, is worth it and what's not when you're trying to be in a certain range. Saddest portion size, go. So what was that? Sad. I'm asking you what you think the saddest portion size is. The saddest portion size? Yeah, like think about. All right, so serving size. Sorry, serving oh, size okay. on a nutrition label. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nutrition labels on certain. Uh, so half uh, cereal is a cup. That one's Ooh, bad. Yeah. Half a cup of ice cream. I know is your is the biggest farce of all time. No one's ever sat down and eaten half a cup of ice cream. Peanut butter. It's bad like, news. Well, peanut butter is a funny one. We should have put that down for overrated, underrated. Because I think, listen, I know you're the biggest peanut butter fan on the planet, 
But I think it's overrated, or at least for people that think peanut butter as like a good protein source. Oh, yeah. No, no. It's literally it's just fat, fat mostly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like one tablespoon is like 160 calories or something. I don't eat something. it for protein. I eat it no, for deliciousness. because it's delicious. <laughs> but that's my favorite thing. You talk to a vegan, they're like, oh, I get plenty of protein and nuts. Or I get, you know, I get plenty of peanut chickpeas. butter and nuts and chickpeas. I'm like, bro, you're the, the fat to protein ratio in a fucking tablespoon of peanut butter is ridiculous. Oh, uh, so yeah, I don't peanut butter is probably one of the saddest ones. And Tortilla that bloody, chips. The Stonewall Kitchen Bloody Mary mix too. <laughs> it's goddamn delicious, but it was like one ounce was like eight grams of sugar or something. And I'm like, me, you tell me four ounces of this is like drinking a Coke? Good Lord. So yeah, we both spent a lot of time um, tracking calories at different points. Yes. I spent the better part of a year tracking calories and we're finally, I was almost scared to stop because I was so used to kind of having that control, and I was like, "What's going to happen when I stop?" And thought you just blow nothing up. Nothing bad happened. Stop. No, yeah, yeah. You just say you built some new habits, and that yeah. was it. Yeah, good. So we both we both love that. Underrated. Uh, or I put properly rated, but yeah, yeah. So it's 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 not one of those things that people that people hype that doesn't work. Like it definitely does. Sure. For white, I think dependent. most people just wouldn't. Not most people. Some people just don't understand how necessary. How necessary it is if you're trying to be in a deficit. If that's what your goal is, yeah. is to lose weight. Yeah. I guess lose most, I, I would, that's kind of directed for me towards most people like, well, I eat healthy and I can't lose weight. I'm like, well, motherfucker, like you need to start counting every calorie because you'd be surprised. Yeah. Case closed. <laughs> We're moving on to some training related ones. That was plenty of time. Oh, that was a lot of food that stuff, That was huh? plenty of time in the nutrition dietary sector. I appreciate you guys that are still here with us. We're just getting warmed up here. I'm actually more excited for this. This are is fun. You? I mean, right. again, not a personal trainer. Like, yeah, but you, you love your- working out now. It's like your favorite thing. Like the nutrition thing is whatever, but you just enjoy crushing weights. I love working so out. Funny so funny to see. Never would have thought it used to. Well, let's start actually with the first one. And this actually came from uh, a YouTube uh, viewer. And there's an, I post a little question in the community notes. And this was already on my list, but overrated, underrated public gyms. Come on. (laughs) That's silly. Overrated. Obvious one for both of us. Yeah, we've talked about this a lot. But, you know, if that's the type of thing that you enjoy, then great. Some people enjoy the social aspect or the accountability maybe of having to physically go to a gym or meet up with a partner and take a training program or a class. Um, but for me, I can get done just what I need right here at home. Yeah. And I am happy yeah. to do that. That was the, the commenter said the same thing. Like people underestimate how much they can get done with limited equipment in a small gym, exactly. which is basically our, with our ethos as well. Certainly there are uh, scenarios where people live in a city or you live in a small apartment and you just ha- you don't have the room. And I understand that. And typically in those situations, you're close enough. There's gyms all around you. You make it happen. There's certainly nothing wrong with a public gym, but I know there's a certain level of intimidation for people that really, and that was you a couple of years back, maybe still mm-hmm. is. I mean, I don't think you've, you've, now you've always been, ever since your transformation, you've just been working out from home. You've never yes, been Yes, I've gone with a friend. Oh, you did to go to Lifetime, Lifetime now. Yeah. And I actually just had someone it's invite me. It's like the Louis Vuitton of gyms, though, it that sure place. Is. Yeah. I'm like, all right, if I'm going to go here, it's strictly for the amenities because. <laughs> It's I forget how much it is like three four hundred bucks yeah, a month or something a, it's like obscene, that. Yeah, and it's great for what it is, but I don't feel like I need that. So like, what no. would I really be gaining from spending that much money to go there? And no. also the drive time and I don't all that, that. That was the biggest thing for me. So I was a gym rat most of my life, but eliminating the commute was so huge for me. And not you know most of the gyms I've gone to were no more than like ten to fifteen minutes. But there's something about. Like it was easy for me to use that as an excuse where it's like, oh shit, I don't have enough time. It's going to take me 15 to get there. And the, and now I'm like, bitch, you have no excuse. You, your little tiny little gym with your adjustable dumbbells is seven feet away from me right now. Like get to work. So yeah, I on the flip side though, I did put underrated, but on the flip side, as a, you know, a, a lifetime lifter, someone who power lifted in high school and has pushed a shitload of weight throughout my years, um, not as strong as I used to be anymore. I do miss having access to some cooler equipment like squat racks and mm-hmm. some more free weights and stuff like that. I could see myself 
wanting to go back into a gym. I, what I ultimately want is to be able to build a bigger home gym. We just don't have a, a right. space to accommodate that, unfortunately, right now, which is fine. But all that's to say you can accomplish a lot with just a few adjustable dumbbells and something to move your body on, maybe a bench, maybe a bike or a treadmill, something like that. So yeah, fasted cardio. We talked about fasting. How do you feel about fasted cardio? That's another popular one among fitness circles. <clears throat> All right. So this is one of those situations where I don't have a lot of scientific knowledge on, but mm -hmm. I'm going to say it's overrated probably. That's my gut reaction. You know, I think it's one of those things that's hyped up. Agree. I, okay. So right. I put overrated as well, but if you asked me a few years ago, I would have put underrated probably. Yeah, we talked about it and yeah. we used to do it. Yep. Or make an attempt. And, and, and I still do. I still do. I still, there'll be days where I'll do my workout in the morning, especially if I'm doing, you know, when I'm, when oh. I'm, when I'm being consistent with my intermittent fasting and I'm not eating till lunch, if I'm working out in the morning, it's like, yeah, I'm working out fasted. The whole idea is that, oh, your body, like since you're, you know, you're in a state, your body's digested the food, you're like maybe in a fasting state, your body's now going to utilize more fat for your workout and you're going to just burn more fat instead of calories. And there's, I mean, not to go down the science rabbit hole, but like depending on your workout, if you're doing high intensity or lifting heavy weights, like you're not using fat for that anyways. You're using like ADP, glycogen, like all these things in your muscles. So the... The thing for people is always if you're doing fasted cardio is to do like low effort, steady state, get yourself maybe, maybe over the course of an hour you're burning it. But I think what they've seen in the research is that it's such a negligible difference. It's mostly just about obviously caloric deficit throughout the day or maintenance, whatever you're going for mm -hmm. and calories in, and calories, calories, out. In, calories out with the workout. And for me, what I found is like, ah, man, whatever difference, say it, maybe I burned an, a, a, a microgram of extra fat during that workout because I was fasted instead of carbs, but I just feel generally weaker. And, you know, I'd, I'd that, that, I was actually going to say that, thing. though. So if I'm trying to build strength, that's not what I want, you know? Right. Which, you know, it, but you're talking more specifically about cardio. Yes. So, but <clears> I <throat> do have less energy if I don't have any food in my body, of yeah. course. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe if you took some of that C4, you'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is, I, I definitely rely on the pre-workout on days where I work out fasted because I'm like, I got nothing in my body right now. Yeah. I need something. So I'll crank like a coffee and a Celsius or something else. I'm like, someone feed me an it. English muffin, yeah. please. I do enjoy typically how like I feel a little bit leaner and dry. Like when you're fasted, but just my stomach's flatter regardless. So I'm going to feel a little bit cooler because I don't have like a big, big meal in there or whatever. But uh, let me, listen, there's nothing better than a big than working out after a big night of binge eating and drinking because oh, the eating yeah. fills up your glycogen and the drinking dries you out like a motherfucker, it dehydrates you. So you wake up, if you're not too hungover the next day, you get in there, you get pumped, get the muscles pumped up and you're thin, your skin's a little bit thinner because you're less high, you know, you're drier because there's less water retention. It's like, it's so counterintuitive because what you did the night before is awful for you, for you. <laughs> But you might look your best the morning after during right. a workout. <laughs> That's yeah. when you start walking around the house with your shirt off all day. Like, hey, <laughs> yeah, honey. yeah. You're not complaining. Mm -mm. Uh, these two kind of go hand in hand. One of these was was actually on your list, but uh, walking. Oh my gosh. Underrated, overrated. It's pretty ubiquitous. I think. I think. I think it, most people would would agree. Have it, to agree. It's underrated. Yeah. But the, you know, then there are these groups of people that feel like exercise or cardio has to be super <coughs> intense. Like what's the point if you're not running or sprinting or doing a hit workout or a spin class for 60 minutes? Yep. yep they do. No. I think people really think they're like, Oh, you're not going to lose weight unless you're killing yourself in the gym. And it's simply not the case. I say most of my cardio is, is walking. Is low intensity walking. Is, yeah. Is 80% of my cardio is walking. Yeah. And I enjoy the crap out of it. So. And it, and it exactly. And you can do it, you know, in, and it doesn't crush you for the rest of the day. You it know doesn't crush I mean? you. It's low <laughs> impact. Doesn't hurt my joints. It's super accessible. If it's nice out, I'll go outside around the neighborhood or in yeah. a park. Yeah. Or if my kid's playing on the playground, I'll walk the perimeter and watch him. Yeah. I mean, you can go to the mall. It just, it's just so accessible. So. It is that it, I think one of the main points I made in my 20 principles video I did in December was that it obviously depends on where you're at, what your goals are. But for people who are having trouble taking that first step, I was like, like 
you know, this obviously isn't new news, but like get a, get a pedometer or just shoot for like 4,000 steps, 6,000 steps, just walk more. And it can drastically change your quality of life over a long period of time along that same note. And I, I had, I could say this about the walking or running thing based mainly around intensity of exercise, but I'll move on to the next one, which is running overrated or underrated. Okay. That's tough. That, this is going to be hard for me to, this is, is going to be hard. No, I know it is. Cause you like, you love your Peloton tread. <clears throat> oh shit. Shit. <laughs> this is hard for me to do because I, it, I truly deeply now enjoy it. It's, it's we both over, put it's underrated over, by it, the way, for both, both of you, for those listening, we put a, Oh, excuse me. Overrated. We both put overrated. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> I'd say just because it's harsh on your joints, man. <laughs> it is so harsh on your joints. I am my like, knees kill when I do it. I have been a large man my whole life, and it's just now. I'll try to give you a few reasons why I think running is overrated, and I want to. I'm not trying to knock run. Like, obviously, it's good for you. It's cardiovascular health is important. I think that stressing your VO2 max and pushing yourself to a cardiovascular intensity that is more than walking is important. So this is just saying like, oh, you should just walk and never run. Yeah. I think you're probably better off finding other uh, cardiovascularly intense exercises <clears throat> that are not running. But the, the running is crazy because like it's, it's all, the other problem is it's also very accessible. Like it's the easiest thing you do without mm -hmm. equipment. You can go outside, you can run. It feels good. Um, and it really depends on what your goals are. If your goals are health and wellness and looking good, I think there are so many other things that are in the long term just going to be better. Obviously, like strength training, I think, is the most important. Uh, and then cardiovascular fitness is important. I think running can be a piece of that. And then there's the different gray areas or like the different spectrum of like, what are we talking, endurance running? Or are we talking like doing a mile or two every day? I will say this. I've never seen an endurance runner, male or female, with a body type that I like, <laughs> with a physique that I'm impressed by. <laughs> and that's not, that's just me personally. Oh, I'm going to show you someone that's <clears throat> going to change your mind. Oh, I know you got some Peloton people, but they strength train like a motherfucker. And they're <laughs> yes, not running they like marathons every day. Uh, excuse you. Well, oh. not every day, but a lot of them are marathoners. Uh, okay. Well, I I might be eating my words on a little bit. Uh, clearly, they exist. But they're it not exists, doing like they're not doing sub two hours like the canyons, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think we, you know, have similar feelings on this, and I love. I've come to love running. I always, I think, because it's something that I, I still always, do it. I do it too. Yeah, still, not after saying that all that much, though. Yeah, but like, right. you, like you were saying, to kind of sprinkle in some higher intensity, yeah. really get your heart rate up for good heart and lung health. Um, yes, you know once a week or so. Um, but I'm, I'm personally, I'm never going to be like an endurance runner type right. person. That's Same. not my, it's not my thing. I don't have the body for it. Even if I wanted to, like I'm much more like, I love, we don't ever, I love, I think rowing's great. That's biking's kind of more my thing. If I really want to get my heart rate up, I still do like just last week, I did a, a more intense run just because even though I know it hurts my body more and my joints are painful after I still, like it, I just think it's overrated for what the options are out there. And it, I don't know. It that, just goes back to the walking, like what we said during walking, which is like, I think a lot of people feel like they have to do this high intensity, like get your heart rate up for this many hours. And that's what it is. That, that's what I, I meant to circle back to that being like, uh, you know, if you want to run for the sake of cardiovascular endurance and be a good runner, then of course it's not overrated. That's what you want to do. That's fine. But you can lose weight and have a great physique and be strong and lean and not run a lot. <clears throat> and there's a million ways to do it, I think, that are much easier. But, you know, to each their own. If you're, I, I just, I just know, I've known people over my life that like have struggled with whatever, with weight their whole life. And every time they decide to, they're going to make a change, it's like they just start running all the time. And I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, that's the quickest way for to demotivate me because I fucking hate it so much. <laughs> like, find, find me something right, so else. So you hate that, it. That, yeah. I, I love it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> no, always love. hated it. Big boy oh yeah, problems. so the, my whole thing was I think I love it now because I always told myself that I wasn't a runner. Yeah. And then when we got the treadmill, I was like, let me just dabble and let me just try this out a little bit and I can do it. So True. I think that that made me like it because I I now feel like I can. You also had those 
boisterous sweater cows that aren't easy to wrangle in. So you were excuse me had to wear like the triple sports bra or something. Was, <laughs> Things were a little more under become control. Become a little now easier now that we've 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 chiseled away a little bit of that extra. You know what I mean? I <laughs> should be slapping myself in the face. <laughs> I know sixty to, pounds ago. Who got, you come home with two black eyes? I'm like, what were you doing over there? <laughs> Usually you get those in the kitchen, not on the treadmill. Oh shit. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> DV joke. Look out. Thank God this is going on story fire. I was going to get taken down on YouTube. I tease. I kid. Wow. <laughs> wow. I ordered us meal delivery service and that's what <laughs> happened. <laughs> when, when's the first time you got two black guys? Leon came home from work and I had a fucking pre-made meal. I had to fucking pull the saran wrap off of. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Good I tried look. to give him lean cuisine for dinner. <laughs> the, re- the reality is I came home and I was like, oh, this is delicious. <laughs> Listen, your turkey tips had 70 grams of protein in it. They did. I just had some tonight. 70 grams of protein, 450 calories, little veggies on the side. God damn. Oh, that's so funny. And it's we've said this before, but like, you're such a good cook. But you have the easiest job in the world because, man, I just, boy, do I enjoy everything, you know? Oh, thank God. Yeah. Oh. And it's funny. And honestly, I'm usually the one talking you off a ledge because you're- you. I know. You, I'm, yes. You're yes. a certain type of way. And not in a bad way. You just, when you are passionate about something- And it and doesn't I'm, come out the way I want it to. I get right. really upset. She gets upset. She's like, I want to fucking throw it out. I hate this. And I'm like, honey, I promise you, just let me try it. I prom- And it's like the best thing I've ever had. And she's like, oh, you know what? Maybe I will react a little bit. Maybe I- <laughs> Maybe I was, you know, it's not that bad. <laughs> that The last time, I don't know what it was, but the last time that happened, we ended up eating it. We were like, actually, this came out really good. I think it was beef stew, wasn't it? It was the beef, yeah, stew, the beef stew. And yeah. it was good. And it was delicious. But during the making of that, Oof. I'm getting texts in my office. I'm at work. She's like, fuck this. I hate it. I'm throwing it out. The beef's Spent not hours tender. hours making it. Oh, my God. Just let it simmer. The beef will tender. I'll be fine. Come home. It's just the most delicious beef stew I've ever had. I was like, you're <laughs> going to need a steak knife to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Um, lifting straps, under, oh. underrated or overrated? So you're new to this game. Yeah, very new. I've been in the game for a while. Um, well, I only have one thing to go on. I mean, I, properly rated? I don't know. Properly rated? Fair properly enough. Properly rated? Because I love it. I have like very limited experience. You just I just got using them. them. Yeah. Because I've been doing a progressive overload and trying to lift heavier, and yeah. my grip was very much failing me. Yeah. So. For me, they work really well I uh, for deadlifting, particularly. Yes. I, I think the counter argument has always been like, oh, like you're cheating yourself out of forearm development and whatever else it. because of that. And it's like, n- no, I think when you're trying to specifically train a particular muscle, most of the time it's like back or anything you're doing heavy, heavy pulling movements. You don't want your grip or your hands or your forearms to be the limiting factor. You want to be able to load your back properly. So that's why I think lifting straps are so effective. And if you're working out intensely, your forearms and arms are going to get enough work anyways. Like it's not, like as long as you're not using them on every single thing, you're still loading them somehow. Yeah, I love them. I don't really – I say this as you know, ex-power lifter. I haven't used them in years because I just don't lift heavy anymore and I can't because I don't have the amount of weights in my house. But when I was lifting heavier, doing bat movements, absolutely love them. Gym mirrors, underrated or overrated? I just came up with this one on the fly. I just wanted a chance to say, I think they're properly rated because- Properly rated, yes. The only reason I say that is because when I worked out in there once before I'd put the mirror up, and it's really weird to work out in a room with no mirrors. It's bizarre. And I had never- thought of that until doing it and i was like this sucks i hate it i'd like to be able to watch myself do this <laughs> yeah you kind of like need to see your form and see what's going on I, it, yeah i actually can't imagine working out without a mirror yeah and then at the end of every workout For you have to rip, i don't need to rip your shirt off like hulk hogan and flex in the mirror that's what I do. you just want to see your veins popping yeah 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 now that i actually have um, a for me it's a lot about form yeah agree i think that's but you'll never see a gym without mirrors what about, oh boy. So this is one, a few of these I took from from the the YouTube videos from the guys I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast just because I thought they were interesting. And I'm curious what you think. Uh, muscle soreness, overrated or underrated? Overrated. Oh, interesting. 
I'm going to go properly rated. Okay. Why do you think it's overrated? I've just heard a lot of people, you know, or seen people, particularly women, comment like, oh, I did this in this workout and I didn't get sore. I feel like it's not working. I think that there's a misunderstanding that if you didn't get sore, it's not effective. Mm, okay. And I don't believe that to be true at all. I would agree with you. I think there's a lot to be... I think you, you can absolutely have a great workout without being sore. Yeah. hundred percent. And it, it, again, depends on your goals, how intense you are. Certainly if you're newer, like a, you're going to be, you're going to have more pr propensity for being sore. Yeah. But once that goes away, like you just maybe have not had that mind muscle connection or the level of intensity where you're going to be getting super sore all the time. That's totally fine. There's still a lot of progress to be made, but something that Dr. Mike said in the video I watched that I thought was very interesting was. He's like, if you are struggling with progress, you don't know why you're stuck. He's like, just trying to trying to work out hard enough to get some muscle soreness is a good starting point. Like, so he's got a good way of kind of uh, boiling things down into just simple concepts. Okay. So, which can be achieved, you know, either increasing reps or increasing weights or resistance, whatever it is. Yeah, I, typically it's 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 weight and volume is the big differentiator. Yeah. I always found that. Uh, volume was always the thing that made me the sorest, you know, Interesting. I, yeah. in usually the combination of both, but like I have done workouts in the past that are like five by five or, you know, when you're doing super heavy weights and you get sore, but usually when I'm the most sore is when I'm doing, you know, like your eight to 12 rep range, 15 rep range, and just doing a ton of sets of that particular muscle part or body group, muscle, body part, I <laughs> body part, muscle group. I got them mixed up. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It doesn't, it's not a, it's not an end all be all of like, if you're going to make progress in the gym or get stronger. And I do think there's a point in diminishing returns where if you're constantly getting too sore all the time, it can maybe be a little bit of a hindrance. Like there is a, a point at which maybe you're doing too much volume to the point where it could hinder your ability to grow because you're not recovering fast enough. Sure. Okay. Yeah. That would be my thoughts on it. What do you think about a couple fun ones? That are not nutrition or training related. Is there anything training you want to talk about? I know um, you. I had one or two more on my list, but there are nothing crazy. I don't have anything on the top of my head. If it pops into your head, you come up with it. This one, this one actually came from YouTube, um, and this is like a little bit more. I think it came from the parenting sector, but someone asked about smartphones for kids overrated or I'd love to see the person that put underrated on, right? yeah, <laughs> on that. I, I, it's not even overrated. I think the general consensus is like, Hey, maybe kids shouldn't have smartphones. Hold off as long as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So we put overrated, but that it, I mean, it, it, in a weird way, it is a personal decision for the parents. It's also like, there's the environmental factors for the kids because they're influenced by their friends and when do their friends get them all this stuff. It's not something I'm pumped about dealing with, but it's, we're at a point now where every, Every parent deals with it. Um, I think, yeah, hold off as long as possible. And then when you do, it's just like, it depends on, you You just have to be uh, intentional with what they're doing with that phone. Like you obviously, um, I there was a point where I was very anti, and I don't even know what the market is, but I know there's probably a lot of apps and stuff now that you use to be able to pretty much monitor and control everything on your kid's phone. There was a point where I was like not into that. I'm like, oh well, there's no how you, there's no trust there and stuff. But I'm at, the, I might have changed my opinion on that. I think, I think it's, I think it's okay to use that in a way where you're being open with them that hey, like I control this phone. I know what's going on, and here's the things you're allowed to do. You can we can text with your friends and your cousins and these things, but uh, there needing to be an element of oversight still for sure. And yeah. I think that they need to earn the trust going forward and yeah. see how it goes. I mean, we're, we're obviously not at that point of parenting yet no. for ourselves because no. our kid's five and a half, right. but um, we'll see what the next eight to 10 years bring. Yeah. Eight to 10. Yeah. If we make it that long, I'd be pumped. Yeah. Oh gosh. I'd love to make it to high school, but I know that like <sighs> most middle schoolers have phone, like every middle schooler has a phone now. Pretty much. Yeah. I actually don't know. What would you say? I, What's the average age that a kid gets a phone? Is I it think like middle school? It's like 10 12? to 10 to 12, 10 to 12. And I know it's definitely some kids younger that get them, but I would love to, not, you know, sometime in middle school kind of having to get to that point where, cause this is the deal. And I think this a lot about <clears throat> just parenting in general 
is like, you know, smartphones are a tool. That's what they are. We use a lot of tools and there's a lot of things <clears throat> that you can try and control that your kids are going to want to use. Um, and I think it, it will be to their detriment to over control and withhold that thing from them for too long because you can only be their parent, you know, you're always going to be their parent, but you can only control them for so long. And if you don't give them healthy exposure to the things that are ubiquitous in our culture, it is going to not serve them in the long run. <clears throat> and I saw that when I was growing up with kids, other homeschool families that were helicopter parents and very draconian with how they raised their kids and what they let them have access to became adults and went off the rails. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then, I'm not saying that happens all the time, certainly, but I've always given my parents a lot of credit. And granted, I was the youngest, so they had some experience with my two older siblings. Uh, with give, you know, having a lot of structure, but giving me the freedom to make tough decisions or make my own decisions and have to, tr you know, fuck things up sometimes and do things that were not good and, uh, learning along the way. And I feel like that really served me well as I became an adult and into my, you know, later teenage and twenties and stuff like that. But yeah, these are the questions. There's no real good answer to. No, nope. it's just you kind of have to do what makes sense, but I think it needs to be a, a good balance of structure and not pretending like these things don't exist. Because you know, when I was, it was video games and TV when I was a kid. You know, pre cell phone, it's like that was the thing that was going to rot your brain, and now it's you know, video games are still a thing, but it's like the cell phone is the main culprit. I think that is the most contentious between children and parent. Yeah, I would say. Can't wait. Oh, man. Can we freeze time? Please? Yeah, yeah. Five and a half. Let's go. Uh, this was a funny one. I want to bring it up. This was in the YouTube comments as well. Monotone baby rooms. She said, please tell us you hate them, but I'm thinking. Monotone baby rooms? Yeah, I'm is that the wording that I, they That's use? what you said. I'm thinking that's kind of. That's kind think, of how it is now, and that's kind of probably how it is. that what like? It's not you, like fluorescent pink or blue or something? I think you might have transcribed that a little bit incorrectly, but. No. Oh, did I? I think so. Or maybe it's someone that just doesn't like kids rooms that don't have a lot of fun colors. Okay. <laughs> Either way, I'm not even putting up a sign. I don't know. I could care less. That's know. your department. But our baby room is pretty monotone. Actually, no, we have a nice Excuse accent wall. Excuse me. We have a nice accent There's wall. There's blue in there. What, is the blue going to like overstimulate him and fry his brain or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know what the point is or what the question really is, so. Okay. Uh, New Year's Eve, overrated or underrated? I know where you're going with this one. Overrated. Mama Over. Lush needs to be in bed before Over. midnight. Right. When's the last time you saw the ball drop? <laughs> 20 my year, 20s? <laughs> 20 years ago? In my 20s. It's funny. When I thought of that, I was like, I feel like New Year's Eve just becomes more and more and more overrated the older you get. Oh, for sure. Kind of like birthdays. I'd put them in the same category as birthdays almost. That was another one on my list. Huh. As an, I don't, well, you know, some people weird. So like I had an ex-girlfriend who like birthdays were like the biggest deal. Like it was everything. And yeah. I, she's not alone <clears> in that. Some adults huge. still really care about birthdays. Yeah. Which is cool. Like I understand for, like, ki what? for kids, like certainly like make a big deal out of the birthday. But if you're like in your thirties and you're making a big to do about your birthday and getting weird and offended, if someone can't come, like I'm beginning to question your, what's going on in your life. I'm with you on that. I, I'm on the same page as you, but I have friends and know people that care very much about their birthdays and getting attention or maybe wanting to have party for themselves or hmm. something or want some, they want like a big spectacle made of They it. want it to be a spectacle. They want yeah. to be, they want that day to be their day. Yeah. And it's like, and bitch, I there's like hundreds of thousands care. of other people that were born on that same fucking day. You're not that <laughs> special. Okay. I'm sorry. Just doesn't make sense to me. I, a lot of it, I think, probably comes from how you're raised. In my ex girlfriend's case, she, her late mother, her mother died when she was younger. She, I think, ties it to the memories of her mother always making her birthday very special when she was a kid. So that kind of like translated into you know her twenties and adulthood or whatever. But I've just never. Uh, I don't know. I would. I would. I would put. I don't even put it up. I would put overrated, personally. If you're over the age of twenty five. For kids, sure. I think it's for kids. It's properly rated. I think kids should. Oh, you, kids! Yeah, yeah, go yeah. out. It's the best, and it's honestly at, at our kids' age, it's more about the, the parents planning and them doing their thing. So this is a weird way. This is a weird kind of a sad way of putting it, though. Is it because 
So I think innately humans are desperate for attention and accolades and recognition for something. And for people that just don't have a lot of those things, a birthday is kind of like a free pass to be like, yeah, you're the shit today. Okay. That's one way to look at yeah, it. Yeah, I think it is. But like, I haven't thought too much about it. So if you're like, if you're accomplished at something or doing something like, I don't know, you have a fucking Nobel Peace Prize. And it's like, it's like I, don't, I don't know. There's just a lot of. I've just always been very interested in people that really make a big deal of it. Because for me, I love it. It's like, I just need a, a hug, a happy birthday. I love you. I need some cake. I need, yeah. D- that's all I care. Give me a funfetti cake and uh, we're good to go. It's a personal thing. Uh, on that note, I am definitely feel like we should have a 40th birthday for you when that happens next year, though. Okay. Just because it's fun. Like, your you birthday's to, You own- had to bring up the 40th. I'm sorry. So, next year, not this year. Son of a bitch. I feel like, but that's not you asking me to throw you a party. I feel like I want to have a party for you because it would just be fun to, like, get all your groups of friends together yeah. and family, if possible. Yeah. But not going to be offended if someone's like, hey, I can't come. No, well, that's what I'm saying. So, that's the thing. Like, I am kind of being a wet blanket about it. Like, there's nothing wrong with having a party and enjoying and celebrating. Yeah. Like, it's an excuse to celebrate. I guess the thing that makes me weird is when people take it take personally. It personally. Yes. If like someone's uninterested or can't make it, that I'm like, why do you care? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that I guess that's the, the the line where it crosses into weird for me. If you like to have fun and use an excuse to party and get with friends, yeah, dude, I'd love having an excuse to get together with friends. Mm-hmm. But don't get weird or offended if someone can't make it. It's basically it. Exactly. And that was a joke. I'm not turning forty in a year. Okay. Well, this year's 39, thank God. It's not this year. So we have a year year. to plan, yeah. Wow, that came up quick. Life comes at you fast, as they say. Ignoring phone calls, overrated or underrated. When's the last time? What's a phone call? What? (laughs) What's a phone call? What's a phone call? (laughs) You're putting under it? Oh, yeah, no, underrated. Uh, She's like, I almost got it wrong. Underrated, ignoring phone calls. I feel like this day and age, if it's not a saved number, you just let it go. Yeah. If you just cuz A the volume of spam calls, B if someone really needs to get in touch with you, you probably have them saved already. <laughs> and C if you don't have them saved, they can send you a text if it's an emergency or leave a message. Gosh. Thanks yes. for playing. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that was an easy one. I think the only time I'll take a number that I don't know is if it's maybe like it comes up as the same town I'm in. Sure. And 99 times out of 100, it's like the dentist or a doctor's office or the local masseuse confirming an appointment. (laughs) That's pretty much it. (laughs) Oh, reading books, overrated or underrated? Well, properly rated? Properly. I don't think anyone's going to shit on reading books are they well i think it depends i think it's underrated and i'm, I'm gonna say that because i'm gonna give it some context because you just got a book in the mail today that's, for the first time in three years that's exactly right because <laughs> i don't read until right now i just decided to become oh a my reader. gosh he's a reader <laughs> no i want to give it context and why i'm a, I, I guess i should have pitted it against other things so reading a book versus audibly consuming it okay or maybe watching the movie i've spent a lot of time like since i haven't read a lot lately I've been trying to do the audiobook thing, which I appreciate and I love because you can consume that similar to a podcast in scenarios where you wouldn't be able to read, like while you're exercising or on a commute or something like that. But there's something so, and there's actually science to back this up that when you are physically have to read something mm. versus hearing it, the same book, the same exact words, it will process in a different way through reading it versus just hearing it. So I love it. I don't know. I, I, I also put underrated because I wish I read more. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, All yeah. Right. I really do. I think I there's been periods in my life where I've 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 really made an effort to read uh more books and it's really had a profound effect uh on my life in a lot of ways. And for me it's it's usually not fiction. I know some I people know. yeah, like I'm very into and I hate this. This was actually on my list too. Was and it's I'm going to I'm going to lump this into the same thing overrated underrated the self-help section of a bookstore. And I hate the word I hate the word self-help because it's it says such a negative connotation for me, but that's what it would be labeled in a bookstore, but just books that are more like um biographies from successful people, uh you know, people that have lived 
profound lives that share their stories. I just think there's a lot of cool things to be gained from getting a lot of good insights into hearing these people's stories. That, like I said to you earlier, that you can't, you're not necessarily going to emulate or do exactly the things they talk about, but you can pull away little nuggets and tidbits that you can use to help, you know, shape your worldview or help uh, inform how you live your life uh, in your own way. I think there's no downside to to reading that type of stuff, but there is. There are people who are like, think it's fucking weird to read those types of books. Hmm. I feel like you've given me shit for it before. Jokingly. Oh. I don't think it's a bad thing. Okay. I Personally, I just tend to go more for the fiction. Yeah. Novels. You do. You like the Colleen Hoovers. Big Colleen Hoover <laughs> big fan over fan. here. Yeah, big co-ho. Is that she's got a nickname? Oh, yeah. Jesus. But you also... You read, you like reading the stories of like people you like, like the Cody book, the, the Tundi Onion. <laughs> you can't, you can't say that. I, sure I can. Oh, come on. You can't call her that. I can't call her t- the Onion? Tundi Onion? Honestly, is that offensive? come on, dude. What? That's just rude. Yeah. <laughs> because I, because I mispronounced her last name. How do you pronounce it? Oenin, I think. Oenin? Oh, and I can't call her Onion? It's like basically onion with an extra I. Like, <laughs> right. Are you offended because this is someone you like from Peloton? Yes. Oh my God. Only because I like her very yeah, much. I was to say, if you never heard of her, you'd be laughing with me. <laughs> but you enjoy those books, right? Yeah. Yeah. But more just to hear about like their, their life, story. her experiences, and their story. Yeah. yeah. But what really gets me sucked in is a good novel. Okay. Yeah. I, w- I went through my Dan Brown phase. Yeah, Da Vinci Code. There was a summer where I was working at a gas station home from college, and I had a lot of time to kill, and I was mm. just crushing Dan Brown books. And I, yeah, I'll give it to you. A good fiction novel rips. It's the best. It's honestly like getting sucked into a TV show. It is, but better. Yeah, I, way and, better. And I think I'm, I am sad that I don't do it anymore, and I have all the excuses in the world. I don't have enough time, whatever it is. It's probably because I'm too dopamine fucking cooked and it's like to sit down and, and read for more than 15 minutes is like impossible now. And I hate that about myself. But I, I wish maybe I should make a point. To, I wish I read a, a little more fiction. I wish I read more in general, but maybe I could put in bring in a little more fiction as well as All whatever right. these. After you finish the book you got in the mail today. <clears throat> yeah, after I finish the Jocko Willink book. <laughs> Uh, um, I'm a better person when I'm sucked into a book or a series or something like that. And I'm not right now. I wish I was i just need to get into something yeah love it well listen sweetheart initially i was like yeah this is only going to take 45 minutes 50 minutes and here we are we've been talking forever because well that's what i do and you're a good sport listening to me drone on for hours but uh this has been great for you guys listening and watching that was a little bit uh i would say mostly focused around like the the lifestyle fitness and nutrition stuff Um, little look into inside our minds and how we think about a few of those things. And yeah, I don't know. I'm just happy to be here with my beautiful wife sitting by my side, being able to record in person without headphones. Thanks for having me again. Yeah. Thanks for being here. I know that uh, the last time you were on, people really enjoyed it. So the next time I can come up with uh, some questions or a fun thing, we'll have you back. But in the interim, it will be back to remote interviews with people I love and appreciate. All right. All right. We'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, be sure if you haven't yet to like, and subscribe <laughs> on story fire or YouTube a week after whenever you're watching this. And, uh, I'm excited to keep pumping out new episodes. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace out.